Welcome back to my channel, everybody. We've got some uh, dots of pure gold down here. I've got some carat gold in here. And what we're gonna do is measure this stuff out. This is the 14K going in. So I've got 171.3 grams of 14K. Here's our 10K material. Zero scale. Pour this in. Looks like we've got 145.4 of 10K. No, 185.4. I'm going to zero this out. Here's our pure gold buttons from previous refinings. 24K. We'll throw those in. Looks like we've got 19.7 grams of 24K. Looks like we need 393 grams of sterling silver to import this gold. Our yield's going to be up about 196.8. So now we'll go out to the melt table. Here's our gold in this crucible. Here's our uh, silver, 391, I think it was. That's close enough. We're going to go out and import this gold now with this sterling silver. Here we go.
transferred the gold to this uh, drying dish. So what we'll do is, uh, looks pretty good too. Came out fairly decent. What we'll do now is sit up here on some low heat and dry this off so that we can get a weight on it. I've allowed this to dry out, cool off completely. Now let's take it in and get a weight on this material. I've got a couple of containers here. And what we're gonna do is weigh these out and uh, divide it up equally now. I've got these split up now. That's 384.7. And this one is 384.6. That'll be close enough. We're going to call this one number two. And we'll call this one over here number one. Here's our two measures of encorded gold. And what we'll do is uh, add this to a beaker over here, dump it right on in. I'm gonna start out by adding about 100 milliliters of water. We'll set this up on our burner, raise our condenser up out of our reaction vessel here. It's awful crowded in here. And so what we're going to have to do is move this out a little bit so that I can get access to the flask. Now what I'll do is start adding these uh, granules of imported gold into our flask. What we'll do is add a few drops of sulfuric acid to this thing on the inside. Someone suggested that we do this to lubricate the glass joints so that we don't uh, have a problem with them sticking together. So now we'll uh, swing this out, swing our condenser out up here. Just get this sulfuric acid on this joint. Now I'll measure out 100 milliliters of distilled water. I'm not going to be real super accurate with this, but just kind of measure things carefully as we go. We'll add that into our reaction vessel down here. got our reaction vessel with our charge of uh, gold in it so now we'll set this back into the heating system here that we have set up wipe off this little bit of excess sulfuric here line this with our flask some nitric acid now. Uh, we're going to start out with a hundred milliliters. Right there is a hundred. Here we go. We charge our funnel up with a hundred milliliters of nitric acid. Go ahead and get some uh, sulfuric acid on these plugs. Just a couple drops, enough to create a seal on these uh, ground glass joints. That's 
perfect. And up here, seals it up, makes a gas tight seal for us. Now we're gonna install our uh, nitric acid addition funnel to this uh, connection on our flask. This is going to be our cooling water reservoir. I'm adding a couple chunks of ice. Clear hose is the discharge from the pump. And as per someone's recommendation, I'm turning the pump on right now. Uh, I've got the water flow going to the top of the condenser and then the drain coming down the bottom. Okay, that flow is not going to work. As you can see, the condenser is left bare inside where I need to have water surrounding the inner tube. So I'm going to have to reverse these hoses. I reversed the hoses. I'm going to turn this on now. And we're going to be feeding it in from the bottom to the top. There you can see that's what we need. We need the inner, inner tube in that condenser flooded in order for our reflux to work properly. We're all set up. We've got 100 milliliters of water in each one of these with an equal amount of imported gold. We've got 100 milliliters of nitric acid up here. And we'll measure out another 100 in here and add it to this. Right now, what we're going to do is add a little bit of heat to each one. We're going to start dripping the uh, nitric into our reaction down here a little bit at a time. And then what I'm going to do is measure out some nitric acid. 100 milliliters. We're going to add this to our open beaker back here in the back. Gonna dump it right in. Here we go. I will put this on time lapse and just let both reactions happen. Looks like we're neck and neck here. I don't see any distinct advantage over using the reflux. I'm going to pour this off now. This is looking pretty good. Liters of water. A little bit more nitric acid to this one over here. get the condenser off of this flask.
liters of nitric acid. Rounding the uh, bend into the final stretch here, and both of these things essentially look identical. We both had six 100 milliliter doses of nitric acid added to them. I can't really see any difference uh, as far as usage of nitric acid. Here's the uh, solutions that we poured off out of our uh, flask up here and these are the solutions that I poured off from our beaker back here this boiling for a couple minutes now. I'm going to turn off the heat and let these solutions, it's just water in there right now, let those cool down. I've allowed everything to cool completely and the goal of this experiment was to see if the reflux used less nitric than the open beaker did and I cannot honestly say that I've seen a difference in the amount of acid that I used. The, uh, they both seem to have used the same exact amount and uh, the only difference I noticed was that it was a lot more cumbersome getting the liquids drained out of this uh, reflux setup than it was out of our open beaker. These solutions down here in front will be loaded with silver. This is where the silver comes from for my silver cell. I'll recover the silver out of these solutions, melt it into shot, and then run it through my silver cell. So for right now, what we're gonna do is get the uh, inside of the fume hood cleaned out and proceed with the gold refining. I'm gonna combine the recovered gold from both of these containers into a single container now. dump most of this water off out of here and something inside is saying probably 
need to do just one more nitric boil just to make sure because we only did like what six on each of these containers some heat and what we'll do is give this a boil Had this on boiling now for maybe half hour or so. Turn the heat off, let it cool down a little bit. up here onto our heat source. This is going to be a little over six, 20 ounces of gold. I'm going to put in some hydrochloric acid. I'm going to fill it up to about, uh, to about the 700 milliliter level. immediate reaction due to some uh, residual nitric acid that's left in the gold adding a little bit of sulfuric acid to precipitate out any lead that may be present I'm gonna drop in a stir bar We've got about uh, six tray ounces of gold in here what we'll do is measure out, I'm going to go with about 60 milliliters of nitric acid. Turn the stir bar on, and what I'll do is add about half of our nitric acid in here. We'll just let it uh, react. I'm going to put it on time lapse and let it react. We've got this thing on a rolling boil. I'm not quite sure uh, what we've got going on here. I'm going to add a few drops of nitric acid, just one drop at a time. This is real hot. That was two drops of nitric, and I don't see any reaction. So I think it's. Uh, I think we got all the gold to go in solution reach down here, turn the uh, heat off, and let this cool down. I'm going to take it down off the hot plate and set it down here to cool.
added a couple pieces of ice to this and thankfully it's uh, pulling through the filter very quickly. solution looks beautiful so what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna put the funnel I haven't rinsed it yet and if you can see in there I've got one little piece of, uh, of a setting from a ring right there it's white and it didn't dissolve so I'm thinking that's probably going to be a little bit of platinum in there, in our filter. Right there, see that? Okay. okay, our solution is crystal clear and bright. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set this funnel back here in the back. And get it out of our way. Now I'm not going to rinse the funnel down into our main solution here. What I'll do is just uh, rinse any gold that's remaining in this filter down into this separate flask. And we'll recover that later on. Put a little bit more water in here. And like I said, what we'll do is uh, recover that liquid later on. For right now, it's been a while since I've done a, a batch this big and I used 60 milliliters of nitric to get all that gold to go in solution. You can see it looks really good, nice and clear. So we're going to transfer our gold solution now to this big 4 liter beaker. get a status test while I'm thinking about it just to verify that we've got gold in solution bang that dark stain is gold in solution Here we go I've got to ice this down for the precipitation We're going to precipitate out the gold the sodium metal bisulfite. I'm going to add the first spoon in right now. Here we go. spectacular. Let me add another spoon in. Here we go.
foam up on top now. There's 10 spoons. And I'm rolling. See the gold is uh, formed. up down on, my, on the bottom of the beaker there it's got some bubbles going on what that tells me is you may have some excess nitric in there you can tell by the uh, fume production that's coming off the top there Put that on time lapse just in case we had a uh, boil over. Uh, I think the danger of that is past now. You can see we've still got gold in solution. The excess nitric redissolved some of the gold that precipitated out. Here we go. We're going to add some more SMB to get the rest of the gold to drop out of solution. Pretty sure we've got it now. There you go. Negative status test. All the gold has been precipitated. So we'll just go ahead and let this settle now. Now what we'll do is uh, go ahead and give this gold a rinse to get the excess chemicals off of it. I'm going to pour the waste solution off into this waste container. There's still some suspended gold here. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Now we'll use some distilled water to rinse all the chemicals off of here. Now we'll do the same thing with some uh, hydrochloric acid. Add some hydrochloric acid to the gold. I'm going to set it up here on the heat and let this uh, boil right quick in some hydrochloric acid. Let me get this uh, solution back here. going to add this to our waste. It'll have a little bit of gold in it. Got it boiling in hydrochloric acid. Now we're going to pour this off.
give it a few rinses with some distilled water. Try to get this into a melt dish now. Take this over to the melt table and melt this up and ink it. The torch is heating my mold. I charged up another crucible with the remaining gold here. But now that we've got some room in our main crucible, may as well just go ahead and add this to this one. Okay, we're back in business.
Here's our pure gold bar that we just refined, single refining again, and it came out spectacular. Let's see, we were expecting 196.8 for our yield. So let's see what we actually got here. We got 202.9. So we'll take it, that's a little over. Sometimes that happens and we're happy when it does. Okay, this is, uh, this thing just looks absolutely spectacular. I can't really describe in words what it's like to hold a bar of pure gold in your hand. Okay, this will conclude the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching.